Conventional wisdom states that the great crime of Victor Frankenstein was that he played God. But I disagree. For the creature he creates through alchemy proves eager to learn and to help others. A sensitive soul that looks on society with respect and yearning. No. Victor Frankenstein's folly wasn't that he created the monster, but that he rejected it the moment it came to life. And why did he reject his own creation? For the most petty of reasons, that it was ugly. And the monster's hideous visage would mean not only that he would be cast out by his creator, but that he would be graded with fear, that he would be greeted with fear and violence by every other person to see him. It is only after giving up hope of meeting anyone who will give him a chance that the monster's thoughts turn to revenge and Frankenstein becomes a true horror story. This is a book review of Frankenstein, authored by Mary Shelley early in the 19th century, and one of the most successful and influential books of all time. And much is correctly made about how this great pillar of horror storytelling was written by a woman, and at a time when the privilege of creative thought was still dominated by men. Indeed, the story of Mary Shelley herself is nearly as compelling as the story of her signature characters. And it is not just that literature's most iconic monster was conceived by a female mind that makes Frankenstein so fascinating. It is also that the creature's story is so distinctly feminine. Frankenstein is a story of love. Love pined for, love delayed, and then love snatched away at the very moment of consummation. It is a story of community, built through bonds of family and friendship that endure and strengthen over the years, only to be smashed by tragedy. It is a story of caregivers who nurse their loved ones through grievous illness, only to see them pass. Consider also the monster's hideous visage, an implacable obstacle to his ever-finding happiness. For as a hundred advertisements for makeup, lingerie, and dieting enforce every day, this is a fear women know far, wor far more intimately than men. But hidden between the lines of Mary Shelley's historic, historic literary achievement, is another story about how Frankenstein almost didn't happen. Mary had progressive, supportive parents who encouraged her creative development. She made friends with leading intellectuals and was in attendance for Lord Byron's famous ghost story writing challenge, a challenge which would inspire her to conceive the tale that would outstrip her male peers. But for all her writing skill and opportunity, Mary didn't dream of becoming a great author. In her commentary on her work, she indicates that she would have been content to leave Frankenstein as a collection of ideas and a few pages. It was the incitement of her more energetic and achievement-focused husband that drove her to novelize Frankenstein. As she wrote, <coughs> Percy Shelley urged me to develop the idea at greater length. I certainly did not owe the suggestion of one incident, nor scarcely one train of thought, to my husband, and yet, but for his incitement, it would never have taken the form in which it was presented to the world. As far as I can recollect, it was entirely written by him. And this is something I think about now, say when I'm browsing Facebook and I come upon a post with numerous responses. I look at who has written what, and I find that, amongst the women that respond, most, but not all, line up to offer encouragement or observe social graces, and most, but not all, of the men jockey to deliver the most clever or insightful comments. Now when I see that, I think of Mary Shelley and wonder about the great creative potential our modern world is slowly unlocking, about how many monsters are lur lurking between the lines that just need the encouragement to come out. Frankenstein gets five stars out of five for me, from me. I hope you enjoyed this book review. Comments, insights, and opinions are most welcome.